In this lecture, we discuss a very important building block of HDF5 that allows you to add organization to your files. Let's start with a real-world example. We've already seen how you can use an HDF5 dataset to store information in a more flexible and shareable way than a text format like CSV. So HDF5 is a good replacement for the text file. But in the real world, generally speaking, we don't have just one piece of information. For example, if we were doing an experiment, we would have not only the results of the experiment, but also some calibration information and lots of other supporting files. Although these pieces of information are different, they all belong together. And one normal way to capture this is to store all the information as a series of files together in a folder. Unfortunately, as we accumulate more and more files, this becomes very difficult to manage. Not only do we have to add information to the file names, but if we were to share it with somebody, we would need to add it to a zip file or provide them the entire folder. Likewise, we saw in previous lectures how we can create a data set in HDF5 that can store information that would otherwise be stored in a text file. And this file, including the data set inside, could very easily be shared with someone else. What would happen if you wanted to share multiple data sets? One solution would be to use multiple HDF5 files. Or, noticing that each object in the file has got a name, we could simply use different names. In this example, we add to our temperature data set additional data sets for pressure and wind direction. However, we have a similar problem than the previous example that happens when the number of objects becomes very large. It's very difficult to keep the number of objects in the file straight. We also notice that just like the example before, certain data sets have relationships to others. For example, many data sets in this file describe location and belong together. So we need a way to indicate that multiple objects, which may be different sizes, shapes, or types, all belong together without making a number of HDF5 files. The technique in HDF5 to handle this situation is called a group. Groups are the mechanism by which you can provide organizational structure to HDF5. A group contains a series of links that point to other objects in the file, including datasets or other groups. And, just like datasets, groups can carry metadata in the form of attributes. The benefits of groups is that they permit you to store data independently of the organization of the file. Not only is it much easier to find things when they are grouped according to a logical system, datasets can be shared between groups without having to copy them. Groups provide a lightweight organization system for your files. Objects can be shared between groups, new groups can be created, and objects added to them without having to worry about rewriting the file or moving data around. It's tempting to think of groups as folders in the file system, but the technology used to implement them is quite a bit more powerful. Groups, again, are containers that hold links. Links point to other groups in the file or to datasets. So, although we can think of a group as a folder containing items, the file actually consists of a number of links that point to each other. For example, on the right-hand side of the screen here, we can see a file, example.htf5. Every file has one group by default, called the root group. That group, in this case, holds links called A and B that point to other groups, and a data set in the file is pointed to by group A. Importantly, we can add a link to group B that also points to that data set. So, we can very easily share the same information between more than one group without having to copy the data set. Now that we've seen how groups can be arranged in the file, what technique should we use to identify the location of an object in the file? The technique in HDF5 is called a path. You can think of this in a similar way to full paths on a file system. HDF5 uses the same syntax that's used in Linux and Mac OS X. Here, we have our file, example.htf5. There is the default group, or root group, which has the name slash. In this case, the two groups linked from the root group have the full path slash a and slash b. Importantly, the data set that can be reached from either group a or group b has two paths. It can be reached by path slash a slash c or by path slash b slash d. Let's see how to make groups from Python. We start with our file, which carries the default or root group with it, named slash. 
we can use the create group method to make a new group called my group, and we can use a method on that group to make a subgroup, which has got the full path slash my group slash subgroup. Again, you can think of this as a series of nested folders. We can use the h55 provided property dot name to retrieve a valid path to any object. In this case, the name of the subgroup we created is slash my group slash subgroup. Creating groups one at a time using create group can be a very tedious process. So, HDF5 allows you a shortcut. When creating a new object, for example, on your data set, simply provide the full path you want on the file, and HDF5 will create any missing groups automatically. In this case, we create a new data set, providing the full path A slash B slash C, and the missing groups A and B are created automatically. If we check the name property of our new data set, we see it has the value slash a slash b slash c. From Python, groups use the dictionary interface. We've already seen this before. For example, if we want to retrieve a data set from the file, we provide its name and use the square bracket dictionary syntax. So you can treat group objects, including the default or root group, very much like Python dictionaries. In this case, the keys are the names, and the values are the objects in the file, data sets, and other groups. The dictionary metaphor extends to methods like keys and values. One very important dictionary behavior that groups support is iteration. In this example, we can iterate over all the objects in the default or root group of the file by simply using a Python for loop. And in this case, we simply print the name of each object. You'll notice that just like iterating over a Python dictionary provides the names of the keys, iterating over the root group in this case prints the names of all the links inside the group. Let's take a look at a real world example of how groups can be used to add organizational structure to data. The format in question, which is based on HDF5, is called MINK, an image format used by the medical imaging community. From HDF view, we'll open the example file. Here we can see the file is open in the left-hand pane, and underneath the default or root group of the file, there's a group called mink 2.0. This identifies this HDF5 file is also a valid mink file. If we expand that group, we can see various subgroups that hold information. For example, if we were to open the image subgroup, we can see that this group contains not only image data, but also information about the image. For example, a table of maximum and minimum numbers corresponding to the values of the image. In this way, we can bundle all three data sets together under one logical image, image zero. And if there were more images, they would be stored under the image group as one, two, three, and so on. In addition, the file contains information on the physical extent of the image, for example, via a series of data sets stored under the dimensions group. To summarize, groups are the native mechanism in HDF5 to express relationships between objects that may have different shapes or types. Careful use of groups is also very important to creating self-describing files that can be understood by anyone. And from Python, you can treat any group in the file as a Python dictionary and use the normal Python techniques of indexing and iteration to interact with them in a very straightforward manner. Finally, keep in mind that the HDF5 link technology is very powerful and can be used for even more sophisticated techniques than the ones we've shown here. Check out the HDF Group website at hdfgroup.org for more information.